Hello there fellow paper geeks and glitter nerds, this is Sinna and I'm back with a double video on how to make this 3D project which is a uh, traditional Danish church. It's made with the Tim Holtz village dwelling where you need two pieces of the uh, side of the house with no doors. Then there's uh, two pieces of the same from the manor big die and then you need six windows from the bell tower you can use the the windows from the the normal village house but i like the arch for this project now uh, you also need these piece these pieces you see for the tower which i have uh, designed myself um, they match with the height of the original uh, house and um, i don't know if you would prefer me making a template you can print or if I should make a cut file for it if I should just throw up some um, measurements of that will be enough so please let me know below if uh, there was uh, some version you would prefer now on to the actual building of this project here you see me fiddling with all my templates I spent about three months constructing this version of the church uh, trying few different uh, ways but most of them got far too big so this is the the template I ended up with shortened from the original which was much taller I have uh, traced out my template on uh, 300 grams uh, white paper and it needs quite a bit of sturdiness um, I, f I find that the bigs um, have a tendency to score right through your paper um, I often secure the scores on the inside with tape to make sure that the cardstock doesn't fall apart but here I wanted it to last um, now I make two of these end pieces for the, uh, the little house that's because I'm gonna emboss one um, I actually make double of everything for this purpose because I wanted it to look like bricks but you don't have to you can just leave it plain white or whatever color and now I cut it out using an exacto or scalpel or what you want to call it and of course a ruler because I need everything to be very straight Um, but here I'm scoring the uh, tower. So, and it's gonna be made in two pieces: the tower and the building. And then I'm gonna glue them together. Um, and I'm gonna need more windows, so I take the other uh, part of the house where there are two more vi windows, so that I can trace out. So I'll have four windows on each side of the. Um, Church! That was the word. It just eluded me for a second. I'm gonna back the windows with the vellum uh, because I'm gonna put tea lights inside so you can actually light up the church. Um, you don't have to worry about the window in the uh, on, on the end of the house because we're gonna cover that up with the uh, the funny looking panel you saw before, the one with the steps. But it's a lot of cutting, a lot of work, but I really think the result was great. I have made this one without the um, the brick paneling, but there's just something about the texture that makes it, well, I think more exclusive looking. And I am checking to make sure that uh, the walls are covered with the uh, arched window. And here they are, all of them. I think actually I actually made too many. No. I, I did make too many, just in case. So. So now there's a lot of gluing. And gluing. And gluing. And then uh, I'll be putting the house together, I think. Um, maybe I should just leave you with music for this part. Then again, I'm almost done. It's not much to say. It was very fiddly, but satisfying. Yeah, I decided 
I didn't actually need there to be three small holes for the windows, it's easy just to cut one big hole for everything. Since this is 300 grams paper, it uh, it's very sturdy. Oh, this is the tape trick I use for uh, for it not to crack when I uh, bend the paper. And always on the inside, of course, uh, so you can see it. And I even reinforce it. I think that was a good choice since this is uh, a piece that I would like the couple to have for years. Moving on to the entrance here, I am uh, cutting down the peak so that I don't have to make sides for it. Um, so the roof will be flush with the sides. Um, yeah, it's that basically. And then I'm going to remove the, the brick doors and put in wooden ones instead. I do love these little pecs. I use them a lot when I assemble 3D projects. Um, <coughs> since, you know, you're always like freehand short of uh, holding everything together yourself. I normally buy them around Christmas. They're pretty cheap, uh, I think, there. And available. And they, <laughs> they have a tendency to break, so I always need new ones every year. Traditionally, these churches are white, but there are parts of the country where they are yellow, for instance. And if they are older, um, they are red. The few few of them are painted red, but uh, there are also ones that are made in a time where you use red bricks for it. But it can be very regional, um, the color. But this is the, the white is the most traditional one. I'm just tracing out and uh, cutting away the unneeded part of the embossing, uh, embossed uh, piece. There is no need to add bulk underneath the <coughs> the house part, so to speak, um, where the house and the tower meets. And since the original cut has flaps for the roof, um, that will be uh, be needed to hold it. I can't just glue the sides to the church. It's easier to keep the the pitch on the roof for the tiny house so that you can keep the roof up.
You never know when you need a small scrap of vellum. <laughs> now here's the reason why I need two of these. Um, I find that the hole or whatever you call it on the manor is very hard to uh, to glue onto the uh, the building. So here I am gluing two together to make the house se separately, so to speak. And then it's easier for me to glue it onto the uh, the church. There is also more for the roof to hold onto uh, in this case. Especially when you have embossed the uh, cardstock, I find it easy to use the ruler for uh, bending the pieces. Here it, it seemed easier to cut them apart um, because of the embossing. But generally, I think the ruler is a good trick uh, for bending uh, cardstock. To get, uh, especially in this case where it's so important to get a nice clean uh, bend. Now we're moving on to the roof. Um, I wanted something sunny and happy for this. Uh, this is for a wedding. Uh, if I didn't mention this earlier, this, earlier this video. So I uh, I picked out this paper. Thought it was very very nice for the occasion. And this is a template I made for the roof of. Uh, of the church, but you can just measure the width you need for it. Um, I did lose some of the roofing footage, but I reshot the process because it was something I couldn't actually explain to you. You'd have to see it to actually understand what I was uh, doing. I had a bit of problem with the blade on my trim. I didn't have a new one, so I'm just using a nail file to uh, get rid of the uh, the lint on the edges. So that's for the tiny part. And that's a good thing about roofs. Uh, they're quite easy to cut. At least you don't need much of a template there. And I need a roof for the... Well, I guess you'd kind of call it a hole. Um, in the olden days, you would leave your weapons in this uh, part of the church. You couldn't bring them into the, uh, the church. And I purposely made this one too big, uh, so that I could cut it down till it had a nice overhang. And of course, it's easier to put on the roof before you put this onto the church. Now here, I'm showing you how I put in the roof, because, like I said, I lost the footage. Uh, I cut these out, these pieces, they're from the uh, village dwelling. It's just the top of the roof, with the little uh, 
pieces here. And this will keep the roof at the right angle because I couldn't make any flaps because of the, the step detail on the roof parts. So this way, I have the shape of the roof before I even try to glue it on to the tower. I just washi taped this one together because it was just for you I made this. And then I can put it in here and put glue on the sides of the triangles. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I had to make a few adjustments. And you just have to make sure you glue it in uh, straight in the tower. It doesn't tilt to one side. And you put glue like here, pop it in, and it'll be stuck. I hope that makes it <laughs> made sense. Um, it's easier on the tiny piece of the the church because um, it has the flaps already from the uh, from the die. And now I need to make a base for it to sit on with the tea lights inside. So I need quite a lip on the base um, to hide the tea lights. Um, I could of course put them all all of them into the uh, church but I prefer it when it's just the flame part that sticks uh, into the building um, it minimizes the shadow cast by the base of the tea light now the size of your base will depend upon how much room you want around the church I didn't want too much uh, I do have a plan for a uh, some figures to be sitting in front of the church for this particular one that I filmed for you um, So uh, it could have been even smaller But I wanted a, a tiny bit of room for decorations on the outside um, Yeah, I also used the uh, the box to put the, the names of the uh, the couple yeah. On this one, um, her name was extremely long. It was a hyphenation, so I put their new uh, collective last name on the box instead. Whereas the other uh, church I did, I put his and her name on it, uh, just the uh, first names. That was in part to the fact that their um, their last name has a letter in it that is uh, very Danish. And I have trouble finding dice with it. Um, nowadays it's actually easier. There are a few uh, companies in Denmark that have started making uh, letter dice. That's very, very nice. And I'm thankful. So on the long side I have names. And on the short sides uh, I will put the date of the wedding. And of course we're going to need some... Uh, decoration can't just have a white base so I'm pulling out a stencil from also Tim Holtz he's very used in this project and he does make uh, very nice uh, both stencils and dies um, I have to say mostly his style of dies doesn't catch my eye but but this this village thing it's it's crazy it's so fun my only problem is that I don't have enough space in my house for all the houses I want to make. Um, they're actually too big. Uh, I think for this project they were a great size since um, this is a statement piece. But then again you don't want it too big. You don't want it to take up half a mantle or something. You know, uh, It's a fine line. Uh, finding the right size for decoration pieces I think. And I absolutely adore the stencil, by the way. Um, I could have made the church with the stencil, but it's I find it really hard to get uh, a seamless blend when you have to move the panel over like I have here. Luckily, a lot of uh, the seam will be underneath the church, so it won't bother me as much. But if I had to make the house, uh, I think I'll, I'd be sad about the seams that I wouldn't be able to hide.
Now, even though the base is made out of 300 gram paper, I will reinforce it with chipboard. Um, yeah, it's it's not that it's holding a lot of weight. I just want it to be really, really sturdy. Um, I'm gonna reinforce all five sides of it, like here, and I'm gonna glue them with the colorful side down, uh, just in case someone wanna look on the bottom. They don't see my favorite, uh, previously favorite brand of uh, breakfast cereal. It's not that I don't like it anymore, it's just that I, I'm not allowed to eat it uh, anymore. Too much sugar, unfortunately. But I think it's really handy that you can actually use packaging from the kitchen to create things. That's just, that's brilliant. I hate waste, to be honest. But you can see here, before I glue it in, it's it's actually already bent. It doesn't want to keep an, an actual straight line. And this is going to help out so much on that account. And um, like I said, I prefer only the flame to be visible, so I'm poking holes with various tools, making the holes bigger and bigger. Um, this way you can also access the bottom of the tea light, since these have actually, you can change the batteries. Um, which I think is very nice. Instead of uh, having to throw them out, you just buy a new battery. And this year we'll conclude the first video, now we're gonna go on to what is quote unquote the fun part where we're gonna decorate it. So I'll see you in the uh, next one in just a few seconds.